heard that. Yep. So for those of you that don't know, uh, you're going to get this in the Patreon feed later. Spoiler alert, because uh, we're going to talk about all the shit that happened. Mm-hmm. All of it. Very, very true. And with that said, you ready to start? I'm ready. All right. Well, then let's uh, get ready to do this thing, shall we? Yes. Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, May 12, 2019, and welcome all you mother queens and lovers who comes on out. <laughs> Drag Race Tea Time, Season 11, Episode Number 11, a.k.a. Bring Back My Queens. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so we so did. Oh, that we did. So for those of you that don't know who these two fabulous co-stars are of this lovely little YouTube slash audio podcast, my name's Gary, and with me is... Hello, everyone. It's Damon, and welcome to the show. This is going to be... Fantastic. Like, get your shade fans ready. Because, whoo, great. This isn't a shade fan. This is a letter pride flag, but it don't matter. It works. I don't feel like going, getting up and getting my shade fan. That's okay. You, you do you. <laughs> you use whatever fan you want. I will be me. All right. So, for those yes. of you that don't know, here on Team Time, we basically recap the show, but we talk about what we liked and what we didn't like uh, and things that we had issues with. <clears throat> this is one of them. Mm hmm. That being said, this is definitely ready, one of them. You ready to jump into the mini challenge? Yes. All right, let's do that part, shall we? So, for today's mini challenge, I'm bringing back a little game we call Slap Out of It. <laughs> but since I'm still in litigation over allegedly slapping a queen last season, <laughs> you'll be fake slapping each other. <laughs> This is how it works. You come up with some sassy lines that inspires your fellow queens to fake slap the crap out of you. And in the end, the queen with the most compelling reaction wins. All right, now. I got this. Mm. Mm. No, you don't. Mm. No, she didn't. <laughs> Just saying. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> It's already happening, ladies and gentlemen. We are even we are not even two minutes into the show. And shade all up in this thing. <laughs> all right. So <coughs> mini challenge is slap out of it. I call it the redux. Um mm -hmm. as RuPaul says, they did slap out of it before, and then she actually slapped one of the contestants across the face because the yep. fake theatrical slash Hollywood slap did not go as planned. And uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, rumor has it Asia O'Hara owns 99% of wow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so that's why this year in this season, now the queens slap each other. Uh, so David, I mean, what were, what yeah, the <laughs> So I will say this much. I like the fun of this one. This one, honestly, so I'll, again, a little bit of a shade throw. Um, this went a lot better than the reads. Maybe they had more time to practice. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Just, this felt a lot more like fun and entertaining than say the reading did. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a lot of fun with it. Like there was definitely some really fun reactions and you had people like Evie and Brooklyn that kind of put their own little spins on um, how to react to it. Um, there were some funny, fun lines. There were some not so funny lines, which happens sometimes when you're kind of going off the cuff. Although I doubt they're really going off the cuff. I think they have some time to like think about stuff to say. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was funny that this was meant to be more on the reaction as opposed to the line. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, I notably guess it's kind of in a same vein as the original challenge, which was where it was the contestants reacting to Rue slapping them. So Correct. Yeah. It, it, uh, notably, Rue says, and that's why I want to make sure and kind of play the sound clip. Rue says it's the reaction. 
like the one that has the best reactions to being slapped is the one that ends going to be into being the winner, not the one who does the best slapping or insulting Mm -hmm. or comebacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because all of that happens. (laughs) Yes. Yes, it does. Um, I said, Gary, I said it was, it was okay. It was, (laughs) I mean, it was mildly funny. Brooklyn does pirouettes. She's a dancer. She knows how to spin. So there was a lot of like 360 turns, multiple 360 turns. Um, Brooklyn knows how to emote. She knows how to be like communicated with her body, which is kind of what this challenge is about. Mm -hmm. And Evie doesn't know how to slap a person, which I find is really weird. (laughs) <laughs> just pay attention to her hand whenever she went to strike somebody like her fingers were kind of oddly splayed out like like not even like in a in a normal like slap kind of like i ev- she every when she went to slap nita like twice or whatever it almost looked like it hurt the way her hand was positioned with her fingers and i was like what are you doing like i understand mm. she has a medical condition but i was like i'm pretty sure your hand is not like currently being affected by that like that looks just who knows? And I will. I just think maybe she just doesn't slap people. I don't think she physically gets violent. I think she just used her words to cut people. Well, there's that. Um, you know, they. they I, I agree that like at least it was fun in that it was kind of like the reading challenge that they they got to kind of go back and forth. Um, mm-hmm. One of my personal favorite moments is when Brooklyn broke the one wall and turned to Rue and said. I don't know. Like, is is it okay to hit a homeless person? Like, (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wow. Like, that was so cutthroat. Oh, that's like, (laughs) like, telling, like, like, I'm going to, like, telling Roxy Andrews, I'm going to slap your ass on the back onto the bus. Like, like that, like, just, just saying, like, it's, there's a thing, not, uh, but it's been, um, I I really wish that they had done a bit more just with it. Like I don't know what all got we all got, but you know, there are some people, and I will own that Nina is not particularly Nina's not always harsh, and I think that's one of the things that is not in her favor with like a reading challenge or this kind of thing is she's not she's genuinely nice. I think, and because of that her reads or her like lines didn't necessarily come off as like cutting and insulting as say right Brooklyn's you know some of the other girls um yeah I yeah. will I will also say I was I actually I'm not gonna say much else because we, we literally have a show to go through and if I start talking about her now I will never stop talking about her so well, all right. And Eric does have a great mo- comment in the live chat. And he says, I enjoyed the hug to Silky <laughs> when Brooklyn says, damn, you feel like a waterbed. Yes. My jaw dropped. <laughs> I was like, girl, I don't know who you paid coin to for that line. If you paid anybody. It's a, it's a reality mm-hmm. show, um, but <laughs> I was just like, damn, it was worth every penny because it was so that uh, hurt. It was it hurt. It like, was, honey, that was a shiv you made from a heel. Like you just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right in the, right in right in the jugular, like like duh, yeah, dead. So you it should like be I no surprise. Play, yeah, it should be no surprise that. Brooklyn Heights is the winner of the mini challenge and she wins nails and lashes from kiss USA company. I've never heard of and a wig and styling package from Lux lab. Another company I've never heard of. Oh, and glue not included. If kiss USA is who I think it is, they do a lot of the lashes and stuff that go like are in like the drugstores and everything else. I doubt oh. it's them because that would seem kind of, like those aren't drag queen lashes, just just right putting it out there. But right, it could be they can be maybe they because the blue ones like okay. So if you 
ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever done drag, you usually <laughs> buy these lashes in these little boxes. They're blue boxes with a clear top, and you get the lashes, and you get a little number, which is kind of like the code for the type of lash it is. So if you want some 199s, you can get some 199s. Right. Uh, or 301s. Or I was going to say, every, every and, drag talks about 301s. So. Exactly. Or so stack, those are the lashes stacks that, of 301s. Yeah. So those are the lashes that I know of. Um, having said that, there's also, like, if you go to a drugstore, there's also, like, the regular, like, lashes that are just, like, in, like, cute little packaging because it's for women and right, whatever. And it's just, like, the regular, la not regular lashes, but just, like, ways to enhance your natural lashes. So they're not usually as thick and big and beautiful. It's not to say that regular women can wear the 301s and 199s. So I'm, I'm sure they probably were wearing them and are wearing them, but... Typically, you tend to see drag queens using those for their right. Drag is meant to be a like a explosion of like femininity, like in a exactly in in like a way of poking fun at like you know how we hyper feminize things. Mm -hmm. All right. So that being said, you ready to move on to the yes, Max? Because I type eyelashes in the hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Might, might very well be the very first time in COLDR history you've had to write that as a tag. All right, let's mm -hmm. get ready for the maxi challenge, shall we? Oh, mm -hmm. or this maybe. Now, for this week's maxi challenge, you need to make over one of the returning queens and transform her into a member of your own drag family. Hashtag drag race. Now, to my top six queens, let me be clear. This is your challenge to win or lose. The returning queens are here for a makeover only. They will not be returning to the competition. In fact, during crucial moments of the makeover, they'll have to wear these stylish pink mittens to assure all the work is yours. May God help us. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brooklyn. You won the mini challenge, so you get to pair up the queen. Hmm. So there's that. Am I still lagging? Mm hmm. Not so much now. Okay. Actually, a little bit still. <laughs> huh. Anyway. Don't know. Don't matter. It's okay. I can Thanks hear time, you. Thanks, Time Warner Cable. Anyways. It's all good. That's lovely. Yeah. Moving right along. So the, so the maxi challenge. All right. So six queens return. Those six queens are Ariel Versace, Honey Davenport, Plastique, Scarlet Envy, Sugarcane, and Soju. So recent queens, long ago queens, all that kind of jazz. Mm hmm. So one thing I will say that I noticed, like right up, the, right off the bat, is um, Raj is missing. Okay. Well, just I'm just noticing of the queens that have been left the show, she's the one that didn't come back, and I don't know if there's a reason for that or not. I'm just I'm just pointing that out as a fact. Okay, <laughs> I wasn't sure where you're going with that. Like, like if that's an issue or no, it's not an issue. I'm, 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 I would be a little bit curious to figure out. I know they only had six queens left, so they brought back six, six queens, queens. Although, right, so they were bound to leave three out because there were fifteen total. Yeah. So no matter what, three were going to end up missing somehow. Who else is missing? Am I missing somebody? Going through my notes because I'm anal retentive like that. Is this where we talk about how we forgot about queens that have already gone this season? Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Oops. I don't remember. Oh, gosh, I went back too far. Damn it. Whew. All okay. right. Okay. Anyway, there we go. So Mercedes and Mod oh, Diamond. Mercedes Mercedes and Honey, or no, uh, Kahana. 
There we go. I knew there was somebody else missing. So we got back the first eliminated, the third eliminated, the fifth and sixth eliminated, and then the eighth and ninth eliminated. Got it. Okay. So it was a little spread out, not like yeah, all you know, mashed up together. So uh, the backseat challenge basically is a, is the makeover challenge. Makeover. Yeah. Uh, so five lady boys come walking in, and a man with a beard. So <laughs> I want to talk about this for just a moment before we really get into this. And Eric even says in the live chat, um, "I'm thirsty for honey with the, that beard." Damn. So five queens come walking, prancing back in as boys, as lady boys. And a dude comes in with a beard. And I was like, which motherfucker dude is this? Like, who? <laughs> who who the dude? <laughs> like, seriously, I watched the episode and I was like, who the dude? Like, I was so confused. And the thing <laughs> is, the camera angles only showed Honey, like, initially walking in. And then for, like, the next so many seconds, they showed all other five but Honey. I don't know what that was about, but it was really annoying me because I couldn't figure out who, who, uh -huh. who the guy was. And I was like, it's a queen of color that grew a goddamn beard. Who the hell is it? So then, like, finally, I was like, oh, my God. Honey Davenport? Honey. Honey, honey mm -hmm. grew a beard. Honey, honey grew a nice beard at a time uh -huh. she was gone. I was shocked. Shocked, uh -huh. not shocked. It makes me wonder how much. So we know there's obviously more time that they're out. But still, like, did she literally, like, after her episode, she's like, nope, I'm done. I'm not going to bother shaving. Or... Just you know, as a thing, because like we all the one of the big things that always happens with the queens when they do the makeovers is you have usually one or two that have like a beard or goatee or some kind of facial hair because there's a whole deal with like getting it shaved off in the makeover challenge. So did they ask someone or ask someone's? Because I think even um Scarlet has some like facial hairy going on a little bit, not a lot, but just something, but I can't remember now off the top of my head. But, you know, again, so the whole idea is I wonder if the producers asked, like, the, one of the queens, like, if you can grow a beard, keep, you know, grow it. Because why not? I mean, Suga wouldn't have had time. Um, True. The only one that probably would have had more time, the most time would have been, well, Soju, because she was off first. But maybe she doesn't really grow facial hair. Who knows? Who knows? But it's just one of those things where, like, yeah. oh, like. I was I was surprised to see how much of a beard that Honey had grown. I just it was know. definitely nice, and he definitely looked good in it. I will, I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Philip says Scarlet has a permanent five o'clock shadow. Shade, <laughs> yeah. So, well, and here's the thing: is I don't know today whether or not when a queen gets eliminated, they have to stay in their hotel room for the full run of the season being recorded or not. Because that means Soju has been trapped in a hotel room for weeks. Mm -hmm. Or if they literally send the girl pack and send her back home. Like, mm. I don't know. Like, I don't, exactly I don't know. how that part works. I used to think that it was that they were they were there all, the whole cast was there the whole way, all the way to, right to the end. But now I'm not really sure because mm -hmm. it, it'd be pretty pricey to like keep all them queens that have already been eliminated, especially the earlier queens, all the way to the end. If it takes, well, you could also, do you know, they could also potentially do something like like Big Brother does, which is they put them in a like sequester house. They, you know, instead of renting hotel rooms, they rent a house, and while there's still potentially no access to like TVs and um, internet and what have you, they still kind of. They can live together, you know, without too much issue. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. I don't know if they get sequestered or not. It it's, mm -hmm. it would be always be interesting to know. Um, so any drag race like fans out there that have the tea on that, you know, let us know. Send us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. <laughs> Eric says, or uh, yeah, Eric says in the live chat, the way Aquaria talked on fashion uh, review, they, they go home immediately. Mm. So, because my thought was, well, maybe Honey grew the beard because she knew she was not going to go anywhere for a while. It wasn't going to do anything. True. So perhaps she was like, well, fuck it. Like, I, like if I ain't going to be doing drags for X amount of time, I'm just going to be a boy. 
Yeah. Get me all the man they I can. Call it, she did call it a, what, a dick magnet? dick magnet? Dick magnet? Dick magnet. Yes, yeah. she did. Yes, she did. She yeah. called it a dick magnet, which I thought was funny as hell and surprising. There mm -hmm. were two There were two body sex references in this episode that shocked me. That was the first one. The other one comes up in a little while. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, I haven't seen fashion photo review, so Eric's like talking about what they were, I guess we're discussing in fashion photo review. So I watched everything else. I watched Pit Stop. I watched What You Packin'. I watched the mm -hmm. extra lap recap. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about the maxi challenge. <laughs> okay. All right. So you make over an eliminated right. queen. Top six queens get assigned a queen. Brooklyn gets to pick. Brooklyn picks plastique. All this discussion online that I've seen has been about the fact that Brooklyn picks the easy, like she picks plastic because plastic is pretty. Plastic has a nice canvas. Plastic doesn't take much to like make look pretty. I kind of agree with that. I've also heard some people say, and I don't disagree, that Ariel Versace has a pretty good face to paint. Um, mm -hmm. I'm more thinking about the challenge of whether or not you are a person of color or have ever painted a person of color. That's where I think the honest challenge is lying. So the fact mm -hmm. that Brooklyn, the big controversy in the picking is that Brooklyn picks um, Soju to be with Silky. And it's a sabotage, supposedly, this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, mm, Soju actually has a really clean mug. Like, mm -hmm. it's very round. It's more peach than almond shaped. But you can still paint it, girl. Like, you just have to be able to paint. Mm -hmm. My concern is, is that... Soju has like a very light complexion and Silky mm -hmm. does not. So I don't know if mm -hmm. Silky's makeup is going to work on Soju. Presumably she's going to have to borrow, no offense, white girl makeup to <laughs> try to make Soju's face. Like that's the way I feel about it. So I mean, she could have. Right. You know, I'm not saying she did. I, I I understand that. So Akiria gets assigned honey. So it's the Davenport family. And Rue mm -hmm. has a talk with the two of them about the difference between the Texas Davenports and the New York Davenports. Um, Nina is assigned sugar cane, which I found to be an interesting mix. But I think Brooklyn was doing really good in the first couple selections because uh, Nina and sugar had already worked together on a team thing the, with the drag is magic, like drag a cadaver mm -hmm. as the, as the mighty tux. So yeah. they already had a rapport. They already get along well mm -hmm. enough with each other. So I think that was going to be pretty easy. Um, Ariel gets assigned to Vanessa. At first I was kind of like, mm, okay, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but actually I was pleasantly surprised. Um, mm -hmm. More about that in a little bit. And then she assigned Scarlet to Evie. That one kind of threw me only because Scarlett tends to carry herself as like this Hollywood glamour queen. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, no, she's a goofball. Like, yeah. like she's kooky. She's a little like, you know, she's a little bit of an odd duckling in a way. And so I think their personalities were like going to be okay together. Mm -hmm. Well, so, they worked together in the past. So we know that there's that. Um, but that was an acting challenge and not a um like makeover challenge yeah. um so go ahead um so that's that's the that's the pairing so we have six sets of queens and the challenge is to make them over and they're supposed to be looking like a family member of the same house of drag mm -hmm. keep that in mind when do you watch this episode if you haven't seen it yet or you go back and watch it again because, yeah. David, <clears throat> what are your thoughts on the okay. maxi challenge? <sighs> Breathe. No. So first of all, I, I, <laughs> I said, like, this is a different twist on a classic. Mm -hmm. So we've always done the makeover challenges, it's usually around this time where they bring somebody in, somebody's in to do right. makeovers on. You know, we've got the classic, like, um, because it, it wasn't spearmint. Yes, it was spearmint. Like winter the green spearmint. Winter green. God damn it. That's on me. <laughs> I'm not other, to get winter it's green. It's the other flavor. 
Sarge. I remember Sarge. That's Correct. right. Sarge for me is Spearman. Anyway. It's okay. Anyway, moving right along. So you have all those things. So this is like a different twist on it because as opposed to like dudes coming in and become being made up into these are other queens. Um, right. And and Silky actually says how how this should be less challenging because you're making over a drag queen and a drag queen knows how yeah. to be a drag queen. So yeah. one would think that this is going to be a little easier. little little yeah. Little easiest. And I will say this much. I like the idea, the twist on it. And I like the fact that they put them in mittens so they wouldn't do their own makeup. You know, I get that, which is I understood why they did it. I don't think it was it didn't need to be these big oversized like Yeah. So these 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 like made it made it home Michael's craft foam like <laughs> like like cut to cut it to a form template and spray painted pink because they were if you pay close enough attention it's a mottled color pink it's not very nice looking um these mittens <laughs> like i think the mittens were a liability issue because i think there has been shenanigans called in the past on queens helping queens like helping each other doing each other makeup and stuff like that i think that's what that was really <laughs> about was they were they were trying <laughs> to li like take away any online backlash and flack that the queens got to help make over themselves like in some fashion or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, they were, they, it was, it was silly campy to have these big mm -hmm. stupid mm -hmm. pink mittens on, you know? So, yeah, I can see that. So I, I will say this much. I think it was a great idea in theory. Um, could it have, gone better oh absolutely um i think there are some <sighs> i'm having this whole personal conundrum with like drag family drag sister blah 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 thing because again when it's other people not like other drag queens that come in you know, they have fun, they give them names, they, you know, pick them part of the family, blah, blah, blah. And we didn't get that here. So all the queens were basically called their name. So it was right. Evie Oddly and Scarlet Envy. It was it was Akira Davenport and Honey Davenport. Honey Davenport, which that's the only one that technically works, by the way. Um because they know, are so, literally from the same drag family. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of the thing. Um so you don't get that fun with like making up a name and all that stuff. And the challenge usually is painting your, you know, using your paint or your aesthetic to put it on someone else, which is always a good thing. And it's not always a good thing. It's because there are some queens like I can kind of paint myself. Like I know what I can do for myself to work my do when I, when I've done drag, which I haven't done in a long time. Um, but when I've done drag, I know what I can do for my face and my skin tone that works for me. Mm -hmm. Ask me to paint someone else. I don't know. Like, I don't think I can. Like, I will be honest and say, I don't think I can. I have some things I could probably pull out of the box that I like tricks that I know. Mm -hmm. But to ask me to paint another queen, especially another queen. Right. I don't know. Right. And that's kind of what I felt would happen here. Um, no offense. Um, we all saw what Silky did to Soju. And I'm so sorry, Soju. Like, whew, that was rough. That was rough. Um, that, that, that cheek, y'all. That cheek. That cheek. Like, I, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know what, I don't, I don't even know what Silky was thinking when she put all that on there, her. But having said that, this was a great idea. Um, I don't know if we'll do it again, but it kind of makes sense. Hmm. Gary. Well, there's that. Pardon, folks. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but we just had a moment of... Loss. Let's see what happens.
Aha. <clears throat> so it's obviously just me right now. So I apologize, folks. We're just having some technical difficulties. Please stand by. For this to load, wait for this to load. There we go. <laughs> Ooh. That was a fun. Am I back? You're back. <laughs> Girl. I just love how technology just fucking crashes and shit. Paint technology fun. All right. So, as you were saying, sorry. <laughs> I don't even know. I think I was talking about Soju and that awful cheek. Okay. That that awful like cut like was silky. And just as we're like, so some of the things you probably missed in the chat. Um da -da -da. I oh. think I kind of like Eric says, I kind of agreed with Brooklyn's statement that Silky would struggle with anyone she was paired with. Fair. I agree. I mm. think Silky. I'm just going to say this right now. Silky knows how to paint her face. She can make paint a beautiful face for her face. That's about it. <laughs> she does it. She does, no, I'm just... We, we, so one of the things we've heard from the judges and what have you is that there's not really much change in her look sometimes. And I agree with that. She has a beautiful makeup face that she makes. But there's, I very rarely see much change beyond that other than changes in colors. Sometimes there's a little something here or there, but you know, she had a perfect opportunity to do something different with the whole face keeny thing. And she chose not to do that. She just chose to paint her lip on because she was lazy. Yeah. Um, I just, it's just one of these things where you had it like there's opportunities to change and grow and you don't like plain simple point blank to the period yeah and um so and i know it's like eric like um um i can't believe i didn't notice the whole season that silky used fucking sharpie i remember her mentioning it like early on and it is a drag queen especially when you're a person of color who has black hair or you could tend to use it as like a quick because it's a, it's a it's basically the same thing except it's a sharpie as opposed to like a brow pencil or brow pen well it's, right I, I mean that's my whole thing is people were getting bent out of shape she was using a sharpie i was like so a sharpie is a liquid eyeliner like it's permanent as opposed to temporary you know and then mm -hmm. like yeah and there's that whole thing about like, you know, like you do that all the time. You even use it on your lips. She's like, look at me. Yes, I use it all the time. Like I am not permanently marked. Mm -hmm. And it's probably yeah. because she puts down an application of something beforehand. Like big thing is to use primer so that you help mm -hmm. prepare your skin, but it also builds just like a micro fine layer between your actual skin cells and what you're applying. Mm -hmm. So when you go to take it off, it comes off easier. That kind of thing. Yeah. So... Um, Having said that, Gary, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so um, makeover. here is Sorry. my whole thing. Uh, I, I have a bone to pick, and my bone to pick is uh, a design challenge. So Rue does the walkthrough in the room, okay. talks to all the pairs of queens, and then she focuses on the fact that it's a design challenge. Those are her exact words. I don't 
I didn't get the sound clip I should have. And it really bothered me because I was like, wait, I thought it was a makeover challenge. Since when is it a design challenge? Like, I, I'm kind of confused by where this is coming from in the show that she says that it's a design challenge and that's specifically like a bone of contention. And I can't remember exactly which queen it is that she says it with. If it is Silky or it might have been Nina, I'm not sure which. But I was like, mm, you have to realize that all the girls know there's a makeover challenge coming and that they brought prepared outfits. So Vanji had True. the dress with the matching pantsuit. Nina had mm -hmm. the two superhero like glitter bomb outfits. Uh, mm -hmm. Evie had the two denim like tribal dreadlock like looks, which she says that Scarlet's is the first version, the first generation, and then she redid it for herself, which is why uh -huh. the judges' critiques make sense the way they do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Akiria had a sort of matching dress, but hers had the keyhole cut out. Um, Honey's did not. They were meant to be in complementary colors, although I don't think they were that complementary because Honey's was really bright. Was, like, they were very, very, very like curious, very bright color. Yeah. Yeah, yellow and orange, if I if that's what I saw. Well, see, that's my problem because I thought it was supposed to be orange, but it looked very coral. And that bothered me because I was like, mm. one of these looks like a fucking highlighter and the other one doesn't. It looks like a colored pencil. So <laughs> I found that to be annoying. Mm. Um, Brooklyn and Plastique. Uh, so I'm just going to call it out. I did not like the dresses. And here's why. The first thing I noticed on Plastique is that the nude skin, like flesh tone panel that's in the dress does not match Plastique's skin tone. Well, yeah. It also technically does not match Brooklyn's skin tone exactly, but it's much closer to Brooklyn's skin tone. Mm -hmm. So my bone to pick with their like twinsy look of a design challenge is that I would have liked the dresses much more if that flesh tone panel had actually been done in white. Mm -hmm. Or if it had been done in like a smoky charcoal black, but it was see-through. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter what the other person was wearing because their natural skin tone would have shown through on both mm -hmm. of them. So mm -hmm. that like, it was just... You know, like the judges kind of critiqued about how a glitter shoe, like a rhinestone shoe, doesn't go with a denim outfit. I don't disagree. I think that was a missed opportunity because, girl, you should have brought just like fucking pair of pumps and like spray adhesive and sprayed some fucking denim on some like shoes. Like Raja even said it. Was, yeah. it, was it Raja or Raven? I talked about it previously this season that they spilled the tea in their own season that they brought like eight pairs of shoes and like 15 cans of fucking spray paint. And they were all matching shoes. They were all like <laughs> the same type of heel, but they just brought all these white pumps and they just spray painted them every single time they needed something to match to a dress. I was like, duh. Like when I heard that, I was like, that's so simple. Like that's all you need to do. So... Sure. I have a problem with this concept of it being called a design challenge because all the queens pretty much brought all their looks already, knowing that there was a makeover challenge coming. So I don't understand why Rue like kind of picks this bone about it being called I a don't design know if, challenge. If, hmm. I don't know if if I will say this. I don't know if Silkies were actually pre-made or not. Um, mm -hmm. She said she, possible she they were. Possible they weren't. I don't know. We can. So, so she technically didn't make them, but again, I don't usually consider this challenge a design challenge. I've never have. I always consider it a makeover challenge and the usual makeup thing is to make them part of your drag family, which means that you in some way either are wearing something similar or there's a theme, you know, what have you, that kind of puts them, the, the dresses together. Um, having said that, there can be, unfortunately, moments when the theme doesn't go over well or the, the cohesiveness of the dresses do not work or the cost dress, you know, whatever, go, go together. So 
Um, but I'll get to that more in when we talk about the runway. Which? Yeah. So <laughs> in terms of it being a makeover queen, yeah. I um I just realized that yeah, I was kind of running into the runway like section, but mm -hmm. it was just it just bugging me that the whole concept is that you're that you're making over an eliminated queen. And then all there's these rules, but these rules aren't technically defined, and they're going to end up impacting queens mm -hmm. and how they win or don't win. I guess I'm just my biggest the usual thing with regards to this is we kind of give this general blase thing about you kind of need there needs to be a family resemblance, and da da da. So I guess for the judging panel, family resemblance also means you're wearing the same thing. Not only are you similar. wearing the same thing, but you look like twins. Yeah. That is not a family. Those are uh, twins. Right. So if you want them to be twins, then by all means, say, you're, you, say you want twins. Family resemblance is, is different. If you looked at my family, we mm -hmm. got some like differences. Like, hell, my brother and me, one of my brothers and I don't necessarily look alike um, because, well, he's, you know, he has a different mother, but also we have, we have the same father, but he's lighter skinned than I am. And he definitely does not look exactly like me. Like, you can just tell. Like, I look like my mom. So me and my sister, you know, may she rest in peace, may don't necessarily look exactly alike. Mm -hmm. On the flip of that, I have two cousins, um, same mother and father, who you could tell that they are related. Like you right. can you can look at the two of them and you would know that they are brother and sister. Yeah. But that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying make them a distant cousin, but you know, family is daughter, maybe sister, whichever word you want to use in the drag family. You ready to talk about the runway? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, I now this week, we challenged our queens to make over their twisted sisters. And tonight on the runway, the category is drag family values. Mm. Drag Ooh. family values. So Philip kind of puts a good like spin on this. If they're talking about drag family resemblance, look at Alyssa, Sangela, and Plastique. They are all. They all look totally different in drag, but have a basic underlying structure. Fact. But they're a family, right? Is their underlying right. structure their cheekbones? I'm not quite sure. What do you mean? I think that? just. <laughs> I think in like aesthetic, and what have you. They have a lot of the same things. Anyway. Right. He can. He can. As we go along, he can. He can I elaborate know. a little more. I, I think. Right. But that's my. That's my key issue. Is like. Having matching outfits makes you look look more like red rum twins from The Shining. Like, is that more what we're kind of going for, mm -hmm. or are we going for double mint twin? Like, somebody's got to make this clear to me going forward because I think that this is starting to get into bullshit shenanigans about mm -hmm. calling it drag family values as the category for the runway, and then like we're gonna pick on things that are not the family values. So, yeah. Damon. Like, I'm sure if you go, okay, go for it. Sorry. No, I was just <laughs> going to say, go ahead and start. Okay. All right. So I wrote down someone was robbed and drag fan and uh, drag fashion is mm -hmm. what I wrote down. And this is probably going to take a minute y'all. So here we go. Um, <laughs> start with the someone was robbed. I'll start with that. Um, I personally think that Vanjie was robbed. I think her and Ariel did amazing work. They came up with the concept. The dresses fit really well on both of them. The outfits definitely matched each other. They definitely looked like they were in the same family. The hair worked well. The you know makeup looked great. They looked amazing, and I could tell immediately that they were they were meant to be like sisters. Like mm -hmm. it all worked for me. She should have won this challenge. I'm not going to give who won yet, but she should have won this challenge. You know she didn't. 
Um, so I, that's why I feel like she was robbed because she did an amazing job. She thought about it. She put her plan together. We saw her working on stuff. She was putting Ariel in the dress and trying to make sure that it fit. And she like told her, I'll just like, you know, put a um, dart in it so that it fits a little better. Like she did all these things and it worked. And, you know, obviously she can just take the dart out and then it fits her again. So whatever, you know, it just, those are the things that like I got. Like, and I felt like she put a lot of work into it. She took someone that doesn't necessarily look like her. And yes, I get it that Ariel has a very pretty face as a boy to begin with. And there probably wasn't much to like, you didn't have to do too much, but they look like sisters. Mm -hmm. They look like family. Having Eric, said that. Well, Eric, to respond to you, Eric says in the live chat, I'm not a fan of Angie at all, but damn it, that girl slayed, slaughtered, and bombed that runway. Yes. I yes. did not disagree. I expected Vanjie to win. Even the girls backstage mm -hmm. were shocked when Vanjie is told she's safe. And even mm -hmm. Vanjie's face said she was shocked she found out she was safe. Mm -hmm. It just, it goes to show, like, I don't know sometimes what the judges are seeing and what they needed. Like, in this particular episode, I felt there was a lot of errors being made across the board. Like why? Cause I will say this much now, and I'm going to say it right now. Um, I did not like Akiria and honey, something about the look when they came on stage just didn't work for me. I don't know if it was the dresses the it was definitely the hair, like honey's hair looked half done. Like, I know it was big and wavy and whatnot, but compared to, say, Akira's, that was very, like, structured, and, and she's worn it before. We know she's worn it before. Thank you. And what I was, was going to say, if you did not call out that she wore that same honey blonde hair, I think once, if not twice already. Hmm. They also said that in Fashion Photo Review, but, like, I, I did notice that she's worn that hair before. Um, and on top of it, just the... Just the <sighs> My big thing, there were like several things that were, there were just some problems with their looks to me overall. I even wrote down, it's like, eh, not really. It doesn't really work for me. Um, and now we're going to go to the next part of my, my thing, which was um, drag fashion. Um, I don't get this concept of fashion and drag. I, I don't I don't under I don't understand it. I don't I don't I can't put my finger on what like you're what you're trying to get. So for example, um Nina and Sugar are critiqued for the fact that the outfits look costumey and and like yeah, costumey and not fashion. Right. One of the comments is but, I think these are perfect outfits for a pride parade float. And my problem is that, like, what what's the problem? Like, where is the problem? Like, what what it? Like, drag queens perform on parade floats and in clubs, and like, if this had been like another like bodysuit, like, like the same thing like Vanjie's been wearing over and over again, like, I would give you that would be perfect reason for me to be like critiquing the fuck out of it, because mm -hmm. again, there's the aesthetic of like I'm performing as opposed to I'm on the runway. I get that. Totally do. There was a statement in these outfits that was beyond what they are. And I think that was what Nina was trying to get across. Correct. And the look the the while they they were wildly different, they come together and it makes sense. So my right. biggest problem is like we're we're critiquing it as a fashion thing on a run on the runway, but they're drag queens. So like, what what the fuck? Like, what the actual fuck? Because I don't I don't get it. Like, should she have just done like a, a two gowns that look the same, like plastique in Brooklyn? And whoa, ooh. well, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! And won the challenge. 
Maybe, maybe. But like, instead of doing that, she gave, they each did something very fun and unique and different that hasn't been on the runway before. That is not the same bullshit that we see all the time and was fun and beautiful in, to, to, in my mind, in my eye, and drag. So what the fuck was that? Like, that's my whole big kind of critique. They were critiquing Evie and, and, and Scarlett's looks because one looked not, at, like, didn't look as good. They looked freaking amazing. Like what were we? What was the like? What what were I, you looking at? I understand that Ross was saying from far away they were both impressive, but then when they got up close, they weren't as impressive because they didn't look as finished. And I get it. Like yeah, they kind of looked more craft style that like they were you know made by hand or whatever. But that's the part I think that we're having an issue with is that there's there's just like an aesthetic concept that we have been struggling with for season after season after season when the judges get nitpicky because they want fashion 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 and it's like mm -hmm. yeah but that's not all of drag which is where some of this argument is coming from that people are growing tired of this show deeming quote unquote through media what is acceptable because people are like absorbing this media and saying that when they go out to see a queen in a local club, they're like, oh, I don't, that's not drag. I don't know what that is, what she's doing, but that's not drag. It's like, no, you, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Like, you yeah. don't get to decide yeah. what is and is not drag just because you watch a show. Like, that's part uh -huh. of the cultural problem that we're having, that these people come fanatical about, like, liking the race, so to speak, but then they don't really understand, like, Drag comes in all sorts of forms and characters and different styles and and different things. Uh -huh. And so I think, you know, yes, we're at the we're at the top six, but we're at this battle point of confusion about like why certain things work. I have a personal bone to pick in terms of drag fashion that Michelle calls out that Nina's wearing biker pants. Like biker shorts. And I was like, so? But I I don't understand why this is a problem. Like Yeah. Here's here's what I think Michelle probably meant to say and didn't say. So, Michelle, not that you'll ever listen to see this, but here's the thing. If what you meant to say was biker shorts cut off your legs and make you look fat, then say that. Don't say mm -hmm. they're biker shorts and, like, that's the only sound clip that we get. And if you did say all of that and then the editors cut out the rest of it, then fuck you. Like, <laughs> that's not a good explanation of a critique. Like you yeah. cut out the most important part for Nina to understand why those are not acceptable. So if all mm -hmm. she really said was because she was wearing shorts, it's like, and yeah, shorts are not acceptable on the runway. Is that a new rule? Is that written anywhere? Like we don't know that as the audience. I'm so yeah. flummoxed by some of the things that were said. I was like, huh? Like I, I will, like I will say this in the like nicest way possible. I felt like I was watching. Like I was seeing something totally different than what the judges were seeing. And I get that I'm not in that moment and in that room at that judge's booth, watching them go through a couple of times. I get that. But what I saw were some very interesting takes on this whole drag family thing. Right. Some were good. Some weren't so good. Right. But it all kind of worked. I will own, I did not, I wasn't a fan of the like um, stone shoe that Scarlet wore in the, in the runway. But I didn't care because I wasn't paying attention to the shoe. I was looking at what they were doing. I was looking at how they moved because right. the way that they did this whole performance with it added to the whole, like they're a tribe and they're a family that Evie talked about. Right. So that's what I got. And it looked fun. The outfit looked good. Anyway, having said that, um, going to Philip's comment, because a couple of people have agreed with it. Right. Um, since when is the family values about whether or not the look is fashion or not? Nina showed her drag family values through her family's activism, which she talked about in the workroom. Agreed. And I just wanted to say that I totally think that's part of it. And maybe that's what is the problem. 
um, that I'm having with it is that everyone knows that Nina has a family. She's had drag daughters and what have you for years. She has a foundation. She does a lot of activism and her family works towards that. Her family is a philanthropic family, right? If I'm using that word pr properly. So that's what she was trying, and about like um, activism and equality for all. Therefore, her outfits and her looks con to me conveyed that, that that's what my family does. So that's what I'm going to put out there on the wrong way. So as I said, again, if you would have preferred her to have put sugar in something that looked exactly the same as hers or a copy of hers and gave her the same hair so that they matched and da da da, then okay, like then say that. As we've said earlier, if you want twins, say twins. Mm -hmm. If you want family, then none of this shit about the same, none of the shit about like the hair not being the same color or whatever, none of that what should matter. Because guess what? Two people born from the same parents can have, to have different color hair. That's called genetics. Two people from the same family can, from the same parents, can look drastically different. That's a family. That's brothers and sisters. That's about as family as you can fucking get. Right. So, so maybe we should stop using the word family values and start using the word twin, because they're definitely not sisters either. So yeah. <laughs> are you are you are you okay? I think I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not done, but I think I'm okay. Okay. All right. So um, you know, my critiques in particular like i already actually jumped ahead by accident and talked about one which was the mismatch fabric for brooke uh also the padding for silky i noticed it right away and i'm glad michelle called it out because i was like silky you got red for your pads before and here we are yet again and i don't know why it's becoming an issue now like Girl, did your pads fall apart? Did like they get eaten by moths? Did one of the other queens hack them up with a pair of scissors and you didn't pay attention? Like I don't, <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. That this is you know becoming a thing, at least right now. Um, so you know that was also uh, a known thing. And then you know I'm there's not much more for me to say about it other than I agree with you, Damon. Costume versus fashion again. Mm -hmm. This is something we deal with every single season. And I'm hoping that somehow Michelle and or Rue like talk about this publicly in some way, like at DragCon or in an interview or something where they can like make it clearer why they put fashion up there as like this like medal to achieve mm -hmm. in drag race, because that's not how things work in the real world like yes technically the pageant system fashion is what will get you more points when you're competing uh-huh and nina even talks about it publicly about how she has been known for this one gown outfit that she wore when she won in 2008 uh -huh. for entertainer of the year and how she doesn't she's never wanted to be that queen like forever so she's intentionally kind of changed mm -hmm. up things for herself so uh yeah i i don't know so it was it, yeah, yeah it's just yeah it's just been my, my biggest thing this whole time and i know We've talked about it and probably commented on before, but this episode in particular, it was a real stickler for me about how we're pushing this whole like fashion aspect to everything. And 
I don't, I don't look for fashion and drag. Fashion is like what right. regular people do. Regular people wear. Like I don't tend to look for now. Granted, if a woman, if a if a queen comes out in a stone gown that is absolutely gorgeous and fits their shape and gives their you know shows off the curves and everything else, I'm gonna give them like that that clap for that because it's great that you found someone that can design something for you that works really well for your form and shape and is beautiful. But if you did come out in that beautiful outfit and you stand there and lip sync a song and all you're doing is showing off this outfit like that's not a drag queen to me you right. put on an outfit and sit there that's i can go to i can go to a concert and get that you know you could you know but at least then i'm at least mostly entertained <laughs> it's true very true all right all so <laughs> <laughs> we get to the penultimate moment in every season when Drew asks the question for the first time, if not the only time, in which she says, who should go home tonight? So uh, it's very interesting as a reveal to see how the queens respond. Uh, it's basically a two-way response between two particular queens that should go home and it is skewed or weighed more heavily to one versus the other. So mm -hmm. the top six queens get to say who they think should go home. The eliminated six queens that are still on stage get to say who they think should go home. Hmm. Notably, Soju and Honey talk about it in Untucked, about how uncomfortable they felt that they also had an opportunity to pick who should go home. And mm -hmm. Soju called it out and was like, I didn't feel good about this because I like I'm not I'm not here. Like I'm not part of these top six that are invested at this point. Agreed. So like I will say this much. In a nice, like not in the nicest way, I know how because I'm kind of been over being nice. I don't think the eliminated queens should have been part of this conversation. If they are not part of the show, if they are just there for the elimination, then they should have. Once you get to the judges' critiques, I mean, it's happened before with every other run, like makeover challenge. After they do the whole like looking at the queens. The the queens that are that the people have been made over go off stage. Mm -hmm. I would have been fine if that had happened, and then they asked the question. But to ask the question now with the other queens kind of just kind of standing there as well, who have not been here potentially for weeks, if not you know months. Some maybe, you know, the only one I think that maybe could have had some say is the one that had been there sooner, like who just left, which right, is Sugar. Which, okay. Right. Yeah. That's the only one that I think would have, should have maybe had some say, quote unquote, but really I don't think any of them should have. If the whole plan point was to that the Queens were just going to get made over, then what they had to say in this port, harsh portion does not matter right or should not matter let me rephrase it should not matter yeah so the two queens that are their names are said the most are silky nutmeg ganache and evie oddly mm -hmm. notably evie gets named five times silky mm -hmm. gets named seven times out of 12 yes. total mm -hmm. So I tried doing it myself, but I was doing it during the um um didn't do it during the episode. I did it during um the um extra lap recap, so it goes by too quickly. I had it actually six and six, and I was like, oh, it's even. And I'm like, I don't think it was even. I don't remember it being even. So right. Right. So uh that's a new twist on things, how it ends up in that case. And you ready to move on mm -hmm. to talk about Untucked? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Girl, if you're not watching Untucked, you're only getting half the story. 
Yes, David. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I say you take a right breath now. <laughs> um, Gary, you go ahead and because probably what you're going to say is pretty much the same thing I'm going to say. So you go ahead and go first. <laughs> okay. So what I said about Untucked was being real and serving tea. All the queens are backstage at Untucked. So you've got the six current competing queens and the six previously eliminated queens. So all 12 of them are back there. The whole Untucked atmosphere has changed mm -hmm. because slowly week by week one by one they've been leaving mm -hmm. so we were down to six so it's not going to be a quiet little kiki now it's going to be a big group conversation mm -hmm. which i don't have a problem with but it just changed things slightly because now there's hurt feelings there's some sort of tears i say sort of because everyone's trying not to cry because they're in drag um you know, there's there's all this stuff going on. Emotions run a little high, that kind of stuff. And Evie just basically calls it out and says, like, in a funny, quippy way, yes, everybody raise your hands because I want to see who I'm going to go home and cry about later. Like, saying I needed to go home. Which I was like, dang, girl. Like, you <laughs> just, like, just take the knife. Turn it while it's in there. Why don't just you turn it again? Oh. Just go for it. Yeah. But I understood where she was coming from. Like she was, she was trying to be funny about the pain. And then it gets into this conversation and then it escalates and it gets ugly, but not ugly. Like in a wig snatching, like, let me take my earrings off. Like it doesn't turn into a brawl, but it's this verbal back and forth thing. And what bothers me the most about it is that I am definitively Team Evie Oddly now. Because <laughs> this bitch is like Bianca Del Rio. She gives no fucks and she tells it like it is. And the fact that other queens can't get with that, they have a problem. Yes. So fucking true. A to the man. <laughs> yes. That's the that's the issue that I have is I was like, I want to see Evie Oddly perform. I want to give money to Evie Oddly. I like her because she basically says, your problem with me is that you don't like how I tell the truth and it makes you feel a certain way. I give my opinion. You don't like my opinion and you let it bother you. Mm-hmm. Preach. And I was like, <laughs> I was like. I love this woman all the more. I'm moving into the yes. camp of her winning the whole damn thing. Let's go back to the to the oddity winning. Let's return to Sharon Needles, Jinx Monsoon, unconventional queens winning because I am over like the proper one winning and the narrative of mm -hmm. an entire season of an arc giving us the perfect queen. Mm -hmm. I'm like. I want the one with the disease, with the super bendy, creepy, kind of like double, triple jointed shit that like kind of freaks people out. Like, mm -hmm. and her head looks like a testicle in a hot tub after two hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, that was a total callback to a great Bro Brooklyn line <laughs> during, mm -hmm. during the mini challenge. I'm just, I'm, I'm totally in Evie's camp now because like, and I appreciate it so much and untucked that Nina said right up front, it was not easy for me to say your name and I don't like the fact that I did it and you need to know mm -hmm. that I feel that way and that I've always been supportive of you. And I love how Nina struggled to come up with words to say to Evie, your stuff is beyond mm -hmm. and people are basically not ready for it. Mm hmm and I was like, here we go again. And it's been a couple seasons since Damon, you and I have had this discussion about the future of drag and where it's going and what it represents and what it can be. And we saw that whole cultural shift change after Sharon won and like kooky, crazy, spooky queens and Dragula became a show and a thing. Like, so like there's always <laughs> been unique, different kind of queens out there. And the fact that, pageant queens <clears throat> silky doesn't get along with like the alternative queens is kind of i think at the root of some of this issue going back and forth mm -hmm. and what really yeah. bothered me more than anything is that the loud mouth of the season got real quiet in this episode yep 
she was being real introspective and she had to like think about things and she was having feelings and she was busy like ignoring Evie and busy thinking about what Brooklyn said because apparently Brooklyn lied to her face, which there's no proof of that for the record. Yep. She says one thing, but I was waiting for the cut to camera. I was waiting for like, I know, right? And I I'm waiting like, for them to show us. Show us the beautiful bean footage is what I was waiting for. Like, yeah. I want to see that moment because I want to see like like what Brooklyn tells her. Because we, I mean, honestly, and I'm, like we know this, if it had happened, they would have showed it in Untucked. If they had it, right. If they had Maybe. it on film. Yeah. If but they had it, they would have showed it. It's the one time we never see any film footage, notably because Silky says it was right before we went out like on the runway, like before they actually do their runway walk we've mm -hmm. never seen any camera footage of the queens about to walk out on the runway like they're in the room True. they're in the work room they're getting the face on blah 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 blah. this and that and then we always see them on the runway and we see them walk off the runway we never see them moving to the runway and then getting up on the runway like and talking mm -hmm. to each other like building each other up or any of that kind of stuff it's the one moment out of all mm -hmm. the season like or out of like each episode that we don't really ever see so i don't know if they yeah. ever film it or what the story is Mm hmm. So my big like, yeah, so like basically what you said, and I will go with that. And I will say this one little thing, like I'm going to use someone's comment because he actually says it. Um, Like I love Drew kind of mentions the directors give a gave a courier to stick the shit stick and told her to stir the pot. Like I am all for like these moments that Akiri was given. I don't know if it was her giving it or if she was just, you know, playing in that role because she has been a lot this season because in comparison to Pretty say like an all Uzi, yeah, as a, in comparison to like an Evie who kind of has things to say and gives tea, she only does it when she's asked or when she feels that needs to be said. Like, right. Sometimes. And maybe when she's in a moment or mood or whatever. But Akira also has these shit moments where, like, shit stirring moments. You know, she brought it up in the workroom after everything was said and done. She brought us the whole Ariel Wicks thing, which we finally solved that problem. Um, because Vanji asked Akiria about the wigs while they're or not Akiria, excuse me. Ariel. Ariel about the wigs while they're, you know, talking about what they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And we find out that Ariel basically forgot the wigs. They right. weren't she, left for someone. Right. The whole story gets spilled and it's technically the end of the story. Ariel just says privately to, to Vanessa, I left the red wig for Silky. I honestly forgot the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Where are the wigs? And Vanessa's like, well. <laughs> now, I notably yeah. caught that Vanessa did not cop up immediately to taking any of said wigs. True. True. So you know not. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say anything about it other than like we now know sort of the T. Like she forgot him. Okay. Legitimately forgot them. Understandable. So now we have this whole storyline of Plastique and Tia and Ariel were friends and Ariel left the wigs for Plastique to have. And then Plastique was like, oh, well, you guys can take them because they, you might need them. And there was that whole storyline, like, you know, and episodes ago, blah, blah, blah. says that they were in her station area, like where her stuff was. And they were obviously meant for her. Like, and then I, I honestly, I get where you're coming from that Akira was like shit stirring. But I mm -hmm. appreciated that Akira called it out because she did not let go of the issue when Ariel was kind of backing away in the storyline. Uh -huh. And Akira turns around and goes, hold up, hold up, hold up. Like, so are you or are you in plastique? Are you or are you not best friends? Yeah. And that's what was said. That's what was said is that the wigs were left for plastique because the two of you are best friends. And I was like, I mean, girl, where is my popcorn? Where is my gift? Like, I was just like. Yeah, I know, right? Like, totally. Let on me the just sit here and talk about this. I know. I was like, this is some real like shit going on right now. <laughs> and, and I was happy about the fact that Akira really challenged the question. It was kind of like, let's know, let's get it all out in the air, which Akira was taking a page from Evie. Cause that's what Evie's basically doing. She's like, hold up. No, no. Like this is this, yeah. this is that, like, this is what you said. This is what like, you know, so please uh, own up to what you say and what you do. Yeah. Like, don't, don't, like pussyfoot around on shit because that's not how it works or it shouldn't work. And I agree. And I, I will also own that I like that Akira brought up the whole Scarlet saying 
that she's surprised that Vanji and um, so, Silky are still there. Right. Understandably so. I'm surprised one of them is still here as well. Um, actually, both of them, to be honest. I will say honestly, I think, like, there's been a couple of weird saves this week, like, past couple well, of weeks. Okay, right. So, I'll, I will agree with you at this point. The fact that Vanessa is still here into the top six is a surprise because she had been performing so poorly week after week recently. Mm -hmm. That said, I thought she redeemed herself this week. Even Rue said mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah. but then you have Silky, and then there's Silky. So, um, having <laughs> said all that, like, I love that some of the things that Akiria, I mean, not Akiria, but was mentioned for me in the in Untucked was that Evie pretty much says that they don't like they don't have a legitimate reason for her to leave. Mm -hmm. Like they talk about her attitude, which there isn't a real attitude per se. Um, there's certain things that were mentioned, um, like certain some of the queens were mentioning certain things, and especially Silky, I'll just own that, like that just don't make any sense. Like, and I love that Evie was not having that. And she pretty much called out and said, You don't like me. And because you don't like me, you don't think I need to be here, which is bullshit. Mm -hmm. The biggest piece of bullshit. Like, I'm sorry that you don't like me, but she's talented. She's here. She's tried to help. Like, you know, again, Evie says, you know, Silky says that she knows that they're not going to be friends after this. Fair. That is fair fine. We don't have to be friends here either. But what Evie has been trying to do is be civil with her. They were in a team together and they right. did something. So like she, Evie has done her best to be as civil as she can with Silky. Despite all their differences, despite the fact that they don't technically like each other, Evie has owned that she's at least being civil with Silky. Right. And Silky that will not give Evie the same courtesy. And that's my biggest problem. Right. And that's Evie's problem with Silky. And that's why yeah. she calls her out at Untucked and is like, hold up. Like you said on the stage about how I'm not a nice person. She goes, that bothers me because while yes, I am honest. And while yes, I am like in your like on it, like in your face kind of honest, like forward and maybe, you know, uh, too rough for people to handle. I still am attempting to be nice and I have done many things to be nice to other people. And the fact that you say that acts like you just wipe away and disregard everything I've ever done. That's been nice. Mm -hmm. like, I am not universally a nice person. And I was proud of Evie for standing up and saying that. I was like, Oh shit. Yep. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I'm just, I'm kind of over this whole, like I'm over the silky Evie drama. And the main reason I'm over it is because there technically is no drama. It's only being created by Silky. Evie has pretty much made it clear to everyone that she will be civil with her. They don't have to like each other. They're they may not like each other after this. What have you, so be it. But at least during the competition, if they get paired together, if they have to work on a team together, she's going to go through it and get, get it done because they all have to get through it, especially when they're on a team and they have to work together. I don't think Eve, like, again, I don't think Silky is going to give Evie the same courtesy. And that's my biggest problem with this whole fucking thing. Right. So. So, David, oh, yeah. what were your thoughts on Untucked? <laughs> what you said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've said some more, too. But, like, the fact, like, I'm loving Drew said, the fact that Silky said that she has been nice to everyone made me laugh out loud. I agree. Like, she has never, I don't think she's nice. And I get that some parts of the, like, they were, before the um, runway, they were talking, because, you know, Akira was bringing stuff up about the whole Scarlet and Silky shouldn't be there. And, like, Scarlet says that Silky shouldn't be there because she's been getting a lot of help from other queens. And Silky kind of goes, 
where has been my help? I made this, I did that. And I'm like, okay. You, 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 you can go on ahead and believe that. But what I, I will say that that's kind of a lame excuse, Scarlett, just, just between, you know, us, I think that's a lame excuse. Silky, because all the queens kind of help each other. We, we've right. learned that over the years. Like the queens do little things for each other, you know, talk and kiki and what have you. We all know that happens. So there's the fact that she's getting help to me is kind of a lame excuse. Having said that, my if you had just been honest and said, like, you look the same as you did when you walked in the runway or walked in the run, uh, workroom. I don't see any change or any different or ev any evolution in you. And since the first time I saw you, if she had said that, mm -hmm. I would have like <laughs> applauded her because that's right. my problem with Silky right now. Right. Well, like Drew said in the live chat, Silky has the attitude that she should win simply because she's Silky. And while mm. uh, I'm all about confidence and you and I actually talked mm -hmm. about this that briefly earlier as related to our normal regular show topic from earlier today. Mm -hmm. Point is <laughs> that, you know, uh, confidence can get you so far, but as has been described, I think by the judges, like your charisma gets you so far, your nerve will get you so far, but like you have to be able to deliver on all the parts and pieces. So mm -hmm. like, you're like, are you running out of steam? What's happening here? And my feeling on it is like, yes, she, she is not evolving. She has been critiqued on not evolving. That is why seven out of 12 Queens prefer eat, prefer silky to go. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got stumbled mentally. I was thinking about how it sounded like a commercial nine out of 12. <laughs> kind of prefer. Anyways. So <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like, like I'm like, how much more of a message do you need? More than half the cast, girl, more than half the cast said you should go. Because if there are 12 queens and you take yourself out, that means there's 11. Seven out of 11 said you should go. <laughs> the odds are not in your favor, girl. Hunger Games, you in trouble. <laughs> so I don't know. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are we ready? All right, so I got new clips because this is warranted. So get ready for for this discussion on the lip sync. <clears throat> Sophie, I'm sorry, my dears, but you're both up for elimination. I'm fighting. I want to be here. I want to make the five. I will not give up on this. Has Nina lip synced yet? No. Neither one of them. Silky has. hasn't lip synced either. either. Of First time either of them. of them. Two queens stand before me. Ladies, this is your last chance to impress me and save yourself from elimination. The time has come. Did you lip sync for your life? Good luck, and don't fuck it up. All right, so there is a bottom three. I am not surprised by the bottom three. It's Evie, Silky, Nina. Mm -hmm. She calls out Evie's name and changes the pattern and tells her she's safe. Mm -hmm. And immediately, everybody now knows who's the bottom two because there are only two left. Yep. So, oh, you know what? I realized we kind of skipped over because we were so busy <laughs> ranting and raving about the <laughs> about the runway. Uh, Brooklyn won the. <laughs> She got a trip for two to Aruba with complimentary airfare, five nights stay at the Marriott Resort and Stellaris Casino. Uh, and a, also a $2,000 gift card from Klein, Epstein, and Parker uh, for suits went to Plastic TR as her partner. Mm -hmm. Notably, Brooklyn turned to the back of the stage and said, Vanji, we going on a vacation to Aruba. I thought that was really cute and funny. Nice. So. 
So maybe that's her way of kind of giving it to her too, because you know, technically she should have won. <laughs> Just say it. Say it a thousand times. Yeah. <laughs> As Philip says in the live chat, Brooklyn's win is a side note. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. like in the arc story pattern of this episode, yeah, bro the fact that Brooklyn won her third win was just like, yeah, okay, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Because we are now with the bottom two, Silky, Nutmeg, Ganache, the talk of the talk, the one who has been saying for like five fucking episodes in a row practically, I'm ready to lip sync if I have to. Okay, girl. And Nina West, who, as I left that in on purpose, all the queens, the six queens that were brought back, for the makeover are sitting together in the untucked room and they're watching on a remote and they all are talking amongst themselves about the fact that neither of these two have lip synced ever yet in the whole season. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of momentous. Mm -hmm. The fact that Rue saved Evie avoided the showdown of all showdowns that we've been waiting for all season, which is really Evie and Silky. Girl, you have no idea. I was sitting here like when... She called Evie's name. I was literally going to back. She's going to say she's in the bottom too, and I'm just like, cool, like because I knew who was going, who else was in the bottom. I mean, I knew Silky was in the bottom. Like there right. is no doubt in my mind that Silky was going was going to be in the bottom. If Silky hadn't been in the bottom, I would have turned the TV off. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have turned the TV off. What am I telling myself? I'm not I'm just. I would have turned it off and turned it back on, but I would have turned it off. Just like I, right. I was so mad at that. Right. Anyway, having said that, are you ready? So they have to lip sync to No Scrubs by TLC. Mm hmm Has this not already been a lip sync song? I don't know. I think it has. I don't think it has, but I, I, I could be wrong. I, I or it's been used before somehow, maybe. Was it was Ta did Tatiana do something with this? I don't know. I I'm, like the on. fact that it was done surprised me because I was like, again, like I immediately that was my brain thought. I was like, haven't we already done this song once before in the history? Not that they always have to do an original song, but I'm like, be careful when you start pulling out shit from the vault that you've already done before, because now Good it's going to be compared to it being done before. And like I'm trying to look and I'm doing a really quick like RuPaul thing and I'm not seeing it. Hold on. Um, thank you, Wikipedia. I think it was just for this episode. Um Okay. That may be yeah. that may be the case. It was just for this episode. Um Okay, there we go. All right, moving on. So the fact that they have to do TLC and they do a low energy number because No Scrubs, while it's a fun song, is not a high dance energy number. Correct. Like, and therefore is also kind of not a number to pull stunts in. So. Yeah. So are they, we ready? Yeah, you, go, <laughs> you go with yours first and then I will get <laughs> some so, or something. <laughs> I said, I said, was this the lip syncing she was talking about? And I'm talking about Silky. Mm -hmm. So I've seen I've I've seen articles on, online about this lip sync. And basically they're calling it the worst in drag race history. And I hate to say it, I kind of agree. And the main reason for it being is to me, Silky. She has talked this talk about how she's going to lip sync. She's going to lip sync for her fucking life. She's going to do it. She's the best at it. She's awesome at it. She even says it in this episode. Da, 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 da. She's going to send her home. I'm like, well, if that's how you're going to send someone home, you are sadly mistaken. Well, technically. That was awful. It was awful. First, first, first and foremost, you did not know the words of that song. First, so lip syncing you do not do well because in order to lip sync, you kind of have to know the words to the song that you're lip syncing to. Because the so whole don't know the point is to 
sync your lips to the to words. The words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how that works. So two. You were putting stuff in here like you know how to we get it. You say it like I can split and I can dip and I can move and blah, blah, blah. You're a big girl that can move. Well, unfortunately, dear, you look like a big girl who can move or can't move. Your splits were mm, your like kicks looked awful. They looked forced. Um, your you slipped on your like your belt fell off and you slipped on that. I mean, that's the thing. You did this awful fucking rig reveal. That's number three. Like that was supposed. I guess was supposed to be a thing, but was the thing. So you take this like Afro wig that you had on during the you know runway, and underneath it is a big ponytail. You are not Ariana Grande. It's also not you a good no quality ponytail. Also that. And it didn't work for you because guess what? It ended up going in your face when you and were going down on the floor sticking. and and sticking to your face because you probably, I know you're probably sweating. I get that, but whatever. But it wasn't working and it didn't work. I would have preferred you have kept that Afro on because at least then it would have worked. Um, I just, it, it was sloppy. It was, it didn't look pre prepared. It didn't look good. It didn't look like, you knew what you were doing. It looked like you decided to come up with whatever you can come up with while you did it. Like you walked to the back of the stage and did the whole like grind on the side of the stage or whatever, put your leg up onto the, you know, the part. Why? What was that for? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna give some clocks to Nina only because she kind of stayed in one spot. Having said that, however, she knew the words to the song. She did a performance of the song in her aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So while I'm not a big fan of where she kind of like stayed in one spot, I wouldn't have moved either because I would have just let Silky flounder all over the stage because that's what she was pretty much doing to me. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what maybe Nina saw that and like, I'm just going to stay right here. Like, keep your eyes on me. Because guess what? I know the words. If she had done like a Coco Montrese, like, boom, like, here's my lips and here I'm doing the words. Right. I would have been like, go ahead. Like, right. but it just, it, I get what she was trying to go with, with the song. But unfortunately, the song is not, it's, it's not one of those songs that you can just kind of stand and do. You need to have some movement, some motion to it. Right. Um, but I, just, I will no, – no, go ahead. All I was going to say is notably when Silky took her big afro off and she threw it, Nina almost slipped and fell on it. Mm -hmm. Because she was walking and she couldn't see it behind her and she put her heel down and had the briefest little whoop. And so she immediately like picked her foot up and like hopped forward mm -hmm. to keep herself from yep. falling. And that yep. irritated me because to me, like that's shenanigans slash disqualification. Like if you're going to have props, if you're going to do reveals, if you're going to throw shit, that shit needs to be off the stage. Like, because mm -hmm. you should not become a hindrance and a liability to another queen performing. Just like you and I have mm -hmm. had critiques about in the last all stars, Manila being a stage hog and like cutting in front of everybody yeah. all the time. Uh huh. Like, that kind of briefly sort of happened again in this particular moment between Nina and Silky that Nina was like sticking to the front and Silky was behind her. They almost had a collision. Mm -hmm. I get that. That's kind of how that works, but that room is very weird because the judges panel is at an angle. And so is the stage compared to them. So they can get the cameras to work everything. Right. So it's not a perfect, like straight on, like mm -hmm. perpendicular kind of th situation. So I understand that the corner that Nina was staying to in the stage is closest to the judges and the more effective corner to be in, to be honest. But mm -hmm. this weird thing has been happening over the past seasons where the other queen who's on the other far side of the stage uses most of the stage to perform. Mm -hmm. I don't know quite what that was necessarily. Yeah, it just, it, and I'm just, I'm going to say it the nicest way I know how this was not what I was expecting from someone who constantly has been saying, I can lip sync for my motherfucking life. I lip sync for my motherfucking life. 
Because in almost any other situation that we've seen on this show, that was not a lip sync that would have saved you. Right. Spoiler alert. Gary. Well, so like well, I have a sound clip to go with mine because like this is already a meme. It's deservedly <laughs> a meme. It has never happened yep. in RuPaul Drag Race history. Yeah. I yep. said I said the meh that shook the world. And here's why. Thank you so very much. Oh, seriously. <laughs> Ladies, I've made my decision. so so first of all let me there's more to play of that but go on go ahead like when that happened i was like oh shit like shit (laughs) like i love nina to death but i like i said it wasn't the greatest you know moment um for either of them honestly i was expecting a double elimination and that has been talked about online. Mm-hmm. That if there was ever going to be a double elimination, this week would have made sense. Send yep. both the queens packing. Mm-hmm. Because we were that dissatisfied with their performance in the lip sync. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to... I, I do not disagree with conceptually that idea that two queens would have gone home this week. Would it have shook everything up? You betcha. And, oh, it yeah. would have, and it would have fucked things up in terms of the number of episodes if they were planning on doing a specific number of episodes and all that jazz, but tough shit. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. You know? So then you have like another, I guess another week with five queens where one gets, where the get saved. I don't know. Like something. Figure it out. It just, they would have had to have done something because that just, this was the one time that I saw that I was like, wow like we've never gotten that kind of a reaction from rue on a runway i mean on the lip sync a meh a meh right like that is like that is so fucking dismissive it is like the worst thing you could say to someone like eh, like whatever like what was i watching i don't care i was maybe doing this maybe i was looking at my phone maybe i didn't pay attention because it was so awful yeah meh but here's the weird thing. I guess it doesn't rank as bad as the worst one in history where she did eliminate two queens. I guess not. So I guess there's that. Mm-hmm. So here's the rest of the the clip. Silky not make ganache. Shantae, you stay. I'm not a mess. And yes, you are. This is yes, just you who are. I am, and I'm going to improve this, and I promise no, you, you, you will know it. I promise Mm-mm. you that. God knows my destiny. Thank you. Uh-huh. Nina West, you, my dear, are the pride of season 11. Now, sashay away. Is out there. Go big. Be kind. Fucking go west. Thank you so very much. So, Nina West sashays away. And the internet had a conniption. I, like I told you, I think, like I told you before we started the show, I was literally sitting at on the couch as it happened going, no, no, no. And the main reason was I felt that this was, this was not right. I don't like, first of all, I don't think she should have been in the bottom at all. I think it should have been Evie. No offense, but you know, like we've said, traditionally, the two queens usually that are like said are the worst are the queens want to say go home. Sometimes they typically both fall into the bottom. And this would have been the perfect episode for it because we literally had this whole drama going on between the two of them. So it made sense for this to be the moment where Evie and Silky clash. They get the lip sync, both lip sync for their life. 
you get that high drama of the fact that they are they've been like at odds at each other, <laughs> pun intended, and one of them needs to re you know not redeem themselves, but one of them should come out the victor. And we are robbed of that that moment. Despite everything in this episode and everything in this narrative, I mean, granted, we hadn't technically when you watch the episode live, we don't see Untucked yet, but like all of this stuff that we've heard and gone through so far this season has led to this like confrontation happening. And granted, it technically still can happen, but I felt like we were robbed of this opportunity. You were looking for ratings. If you're looking for something like get the people to watch for sure, there should have been a silky Evie lip sync. Because I would definitely would have watched the fuck out of that. Right. And to then and 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 but instead to put the two, I'll just go ahead and say the two larger queens. Not not that silk, not that Nina is b massive, but she's a larger framed queen to put them together and then to get we get this lip sync. And I get it. It wasn't the greatest lip sync. We've talked about that. But to, like to see what Silky did, to see not knowing the words, to see the fumbling, to see the flailing, the awful tricks that she was trying to pull off that failed to do, um, the floundering around the stage, and to then not send her home. I call shenanigans on that. Mm -hmm. Like I call like the biggest fucking shenanigans and I would like an explanation. <laughs> like, cause to me it did not, it didn't make sense because nothing that Silky did worked in the, in the thing of the song, in the episode, you know, everything that it just didn't work. Whereas I get that Nina kind of had a go-to move and she kind of played the song, but she knew the words and she was performing it better. So what 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 were we watching what did Bruce see or what did the producers see to make this kind of change to make this decision right yeah sorry i'm just it it still even watching it again it still pisses me off i still don't get it i still don't understand where it it where it came from like i don't get why this happened and that's maybe maybe that's because i'm not a tv producer but let me let me boil it down i don't see at this point what silky can do to redeem herself Like, I don't see anything that she can do at this point to, to, to somehow make it in the top four. Right. So, like, I, I mentioned, like we mentioned, I personally would have been, and I know it sounds silly because I love Nina, but I would, in this moment, I would have been fine with the double elimination if they had both gone home. I know that sounds crazy, but given what we saw, it wasn't up to par and we got a meh from Rue. So like this was, I would have sucked for like episode count and whatever the fuck ever. But like, if anything deserved a double elimination in this episode, this in the season so far, it was this. And I would have been okay with it to a point. Cause I don't think I just, I don't think Silky did enough to keep her there mm -hmm. at all. So, um, so Eric kind of said, not going to lie, I shut the fucking TV off and refused to watch Untucked. 
Philip commented, and I was furious that you did, Eric. <laughs> well, they are married to each other. I know. So. <laughs> I think that's cute. Damn it, Philip. Sorry, Eric. I was watching that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think, it, yeah, I, I agree with you, Eric. It was a total ratings cop out. Ooh. Yeah. Um, mm, that's an interesting comment, Eric. Mm -hmm. And maybe Rue felt threatened when Nina whipped out that trans outfit. Like, shit, this bitch just shaded me with the runway. I mean, we could we could talk about that if we want to. <laughs> I I don't agree with that. Like I, it is a funny thing to kind of say, like to poke fun at because Rue has had problems with like trans acceptance, especially with the television show itself. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that was a part of the deciding factor. I don't no. think that was it at all. I think um, with it, I don't think it was. I will say this much: I think what Nina was trying to do was that these communities can work together and can be a positive, you know good for the community at large and right. i think maybe that's what she was going with with that whole thing um again i like the outfit choices but right whatever drew says we already had a double chante so a double sachet would make sense agreed right it would have it would have balanced sense. things but mm -hmm. that is not what happened um no so it was spoiled for me online, not because of people posting on Facebook, but because of Instagram. Or no, actually it was Twitter. Mm. So this is how it played out for me. The Vixen, because I follow the Vixen on Twitter, spoiled the episode for me. And I was really mad at her, but then I realized I can't fully be mad at her because she retweeted Nina's post. Mm. And the fact that Nina said in her post, it's an it's been an amazing fucking journey, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, God damn it. Like <laughs> the fact that she retweeted and said something, like Nina already owned up to it. Like, and that's what bothered me about this is I was like, we live in such a fast moving cycle that like if you don't see it when it airs, apparently that's an issue. And iTunes notably did not make the fucking episode available until sometime late Saturday morning. Really? Wow. That's why I ended up watching it on Saturday because normally it's available on Friday when I'm at work or even right before I go to work in the morning. But mm. it wasn't available. It wasn't available. So I go to work, put in my day. I come home. I get out of my work clothes. I get into my comfy clothes. I like grab something to drink. I have some comfort food. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to watch Drag Race. And I'm going to watch Untucked on iTunes. And guess what I don't get to do on Friday night? I don't get to watch anything on iTunes because there's nothing to watch. <laughs> oh, my God. So I had to wait until Saturday on my day off yesterday for it to finally come through and I get an announcement. Oh, God. So when you messaged me and you were like, have you watched? <laughs> Girl, have you watched the episode yet? Right. And I was like, no, because I got this thing called work I got to go to on <laughs> Friday. So, you know, I would watch it after work. And then I couldn't watch it after work on Friday. So I had to wait until Saturday. But I already told you, I knew shenanigans was afoot. I don't care what anybody says. But when iTunes doesn't load the episode right away. Shit went down in the episode. Mm -hmm. So I yes. waited. I waited dutifully because I paid for it. I waited till it aired. And I get the uncensored version. That's why you hear the swear words. <laughs> so, <laughs> And that's when I ended up watching it. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. That's a thing. Yeah. Agreed, Philip. Silky did worse than... Philip says, Silky did worse than Nina. If Rue thought it was mad and wanted Nina gone, then she should have sent them both home. Yeah. So, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. You ready to get into Snaps and Eye Rolls? Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. 
All right, snaps and eye rolls, aka hits and misses, the highs and lows of the episode. Damon, what do you got snaps for? So I have biggest snaps to Vandy for her redemption. I think she did a really great job painting Ariel and making her her drag sister. I think they did a really amazing job on the runway. I think it worked really well. I love the outfits. I love what they did. Um, it all worked for me. Um, in Fashion Photo Review, um, Aquaria, Aquaria, excuse me. No, Aquaria. God, I can't say it. I can't speak. Aquaria says that she's not a big fan of the, you know, big puffy like reveal coats, but whatever. Like that's a drag queen staple. Don't knock it. It's not fashion. It's drag. Um, having said that, like she loved their outfits and then they were stoned and everything else. I just think that she did a really great job in this episode of taking, making attention, paying attention to detail, putting something together, painting herself and her drag daughter so that they look the same or similar enough. And they came up with this routine that worked really well for them, including the whole Miss Vanjie walking backwards thing, which whatever, you know, it's what she's known for. It works. Um, so I just, that, I just think she did a really good job. As I've mentioned several times this episode, I think she should have won. Um, and I am proud of her. Like Rue kind of says, like she did a really great job. Yeah. Gary. Yeah. So I, I want to say this because you brought up about her redemption. Absolutely. Vanjie deserves like the props for that. One of the things that came up in her judges critiques was how much Ariel's makeup, her paint, her mug looked just like Vanessa. Mm -hmm. I'm only bringing this up because I'm still pissed off about this whole like twinsy issue when it's supposed to be family drag resemblance. Mm -hmm. Cause same could kind of be said for Brooklyn and Plastique that they look like twins. So if that's really what it is, then call it what it is. I'm tired of this other shit. But Vanjie still deserved it because it was definitely well executed. And I think she should have won. So my snaps are for two specific things. The first mm -hmm. one is something that we did not talk about on purpose because I had to watch it twice. Rue calling out silky mm. when she walks through the room and talks about like what the challenge is going to be and what she's going to do and all the hip pad issue from the last episode silky fumbles bumbles drops the ball in the conversation mm. cannot respond to rue rue says to her you got nothing to say for that If I was Soju, I would have crawled under the table. Like I would have done <laughs> a visual sight gag. Like I would have like I would have dug a hole and I would have crawled yeah. down in it and I would have just disappeared uh -huh. on a camera shot. I was proud of the fact that Rue called her out on it. I was like, good. Because the loud mouth of the season needs that moment. She needs to be humbled. It didn't last long. I know. Uh, and then that runway look, specifically Rue's runway look. Mm -hmm. It was good. It was oh, not. Yeah. It was not a Zaldi outfit, but it oh. was. It was. I know. According to the credit roll, the costume was not Zaldi. Uh, but it was a really good look. I really liked it. It reminded me very much of her statue maquette, like you know. Uh, kind of, you know, dress drape thing. She walked out and I was like, eh, there we go. Like, there's the silhouette. There's the look. It's all very well yep. put together. Can't complain about it. But it's, it's, it was, you know, one of those, because I'm more, I'm more critical, I guess, and as each season goes by of Ruth's outfits. I'm like, okay. So I just want to, yeah, it worked really well. Props that this one was a good one. David, mm -hmm. what are your eye rolls? <laughs> if I haven't said it before, that's what I have. I'm going to say it again. Silky. Silky, silky. I, I don't know. I don't know what else I can really say anymore. I'm kind of done with this whole, um, like, 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 like you're saying. I'm not a mess. I'm not a roach. I'm blah 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 blah. I just like, and I was saying while it was going on, I'm like, yes, you are a mess. 
because I don't I don't see anything else about you that is redeemable at this point. I see someone who has coasted on their personality only and maybe has good like face and makeup, but you've coasted on this whole personality over, over the top, out, off the wall kind of thing. And it's grating. I'm tired. I'm done. And as you can tell, most of the other queens in the season are done and over it for some reason or another. So I'm a la kind of what happened with Eureka in season 10 or season, season 10. Yeah. The whole we're getting fed this narrative. I'm hoping we're not getting fed the same, a similar thing where this personality that really should have been gone a while ago um, is somehow still here and has apparently now made it in the top five on nothing but personality. I don't think she should have won Snatch Game. Um, I can't remember what else she's won, but the Snatch Game was definitely the one that I don't think she should have won. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, it's just, I'm just getting, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, y'all. I'm really tired of this, this person. I'm getting tired of her on the show. I'm not seeing anything new. I'm not seeing any growth. I'm not seeing any change. I'm not seeing the arc that I like to see in a queen. Brooklyn has given us an arc. She has gone from, I'm a dancer from Canada queen to definitely she's added a lot more nuance and fun to her polished, you know, character. We've gotten an arc with Akiria who has gone from, I'm a showgirl or not, I'm a pageant queen, but I can also be funny. We've got, yes, that's a similar thing we've gone in the past before, but she's really taken herself out of her box and put herself into these other boxes, kind of like a Trinity, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Vanjie kind of has an arc. Um, the, re the redemption at the beginning of her coming back, she got told critiques and chosen has chosen to move on from those, and she's still trying to do the best she can. Um, with regards to who else is left? Um, Evie, we have definitely gotten someone who has gone from um, I'm going to be a kooky, spooky queen to someone that can have a little bit fun and give us some high fashion ish drama, you know, things to go. So, right. So, uh, mine I just said was I give eye rolls to manufactured drama. I felt there was a heaping truckload of bullshit in this episode of manufactured drama, and I just was not okay with it. Yes, it makes good television, but I was tired and I was over it. Um, you know, from the Silky having an issue with being stuck with Soju and that it was, you know, uh, intentional you know, like issue that Brooklyn was trying to like screw her over and then using Soju as like an excuse for why she performed so badly and Ariel's hair situation and like call it other people out. I mean, just like it was over and over and over and over again. It just felt consistently time after time that there was mm -hmm. like questions being asked, things being planted, the way things were said. Like, I was just like, really, 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 really. We are just like going mm -hmm. over all these things. So yeah, I just thought there was a lot of manufactured drama in this episode up to and including, mm -hmm. oh, that's right. The elimination. Mm hmm. I think honestly, like we said, like when, when Rue said meh, like that was my clue that this was going to be a double. Mm -hmm. I just like, like when Rue's not impressed with the lip sync, both of the girls go home. Right. Most of the time. Like, um, so again, it just, like you said, manufactured. I don't get why she needs to come, why she needs to save Miss Silky. I, I don't understand it. I don't know why she's still here. I'm, I'm, unless we're going to get the showdown that we want, 
Right. I mean, that's the only reason I can see it happening. Um, do we know what the next? Oh, hold on, I can see, figure it out. What's the next episode? Let's go down and look and see what's going to happen in the next episode. Um, so the next again. episode, oh, is not up here, but it's on my phone. Pardon, that's why we look some stuff up. <laughs> There it is. So this says queens everywhere. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I know that what we saw from the uh, preview that uh, Michelle's actually doing the workroom quick thing. So that's usually an indication that they're doing something in relation to, say, a RuPaul song or something along those lines. Well, right. I believe this is the one. I think the song is actually called Queens Everywhere. And I think it's the Rue song that they get to write their own lyrics to. And I think this might be the episode where they do the Tic Tac Lunch. Mm -hmm. the, AKA now, Our... the pod, now the podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll yeah. see. We will, we will see how that goes. <sighs> So. Is there anything else? Have we missed anything? I don't Audience? know. If we, I don't know if we necessarily missed anything. I will say this: Nina, fucking West has been one of the busiest bitches in the past forty-eight hours, seventy-two mm -hmm. hours since the episode aired. She has been in so many interviews. There have been so many things said online, posts, websites, articles. You name it, bitches everywhere. Um, sure. Like it's just blown up all over the place about her elimination. I am so proud of her. Uh, the love that she has gotten from celebrities who are not mm -hmm. happy about the fact that she was eliminated. Um, like Acasio Cortez, <laughs> like <laughs> messaged her on Instagram, sent her a private like video thing. It was like, you know, in our house, we watched drag race, but unfortunately due to work, cause it's super crazy right now, which I thought was funny as shit that she said it that way. She's like, you know, we don't get to watch it when it airs on Thursday, blah, 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 blah. So, like, like she's just gotten this outpouring all over the place from people who have been um, yeah, really, really and, supportive of her. And I will say this. I think of the queens that have gotten eliminated, you know, throughout the seasons. I think Nina has been the one that has taken this. Not, she's not the only one, but she's been one of those ones that has taken this potentially like fucked up elimination and is not being negative about right. it. Right. Agreed. She doesn't like, she's not like me that saying she was robbed and all this shit and calling Silky, like trying to rake Silky over the coals, but she, you know, she's right. still like being respectful. And that's, I think what I love the most about Nina. Yeah. I have net to meet her in person and I want to, um, Again, I've known about her for years. I've, you know, one of my good, one of the queens I know here in Cincinnati, Penetration, is very fond of her and knows her really well. Um, and I will admit, like, that's, I think maybe that's part of why everyone is as upset as they are. Well, this is the way I look at it. I expect two things to happen. I expect Nina to win Miss Congeniality. Because mm -hmm. they're probably still going to call it that instead of calling it fan favorite. So that'll get revealed in two weeks at the airing of the reunion. Um, and I just expect her to continue on and to have a really bold, like continuing career. Mm -hmm. Like she's, she's really on the upward trajectory has been, I'm quite happy for her. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the outpouring of love that she's been getting, you know, has been really, really good and how mm -hmm. she's been handling stuff. Uh, go to ninawest.com to be a supporter. She has two albums they're about to drop. I find this a very interesting choice. Um, one of them makes perfect sense and is unique. She's making a drag children's album of songs. So it is meant for children. Um, it's called mm -hmm. Drag is Magic. <laughs> 
It's so perfect. You should see the cover. It's cartoony. She's on a unicorn. She's got a bird on her finger. It's just like, <laughs> it's insane. She also is dropping one called John Goodman. Because she's spoofing the fact that she's considered a drag dad. So I'm not exactly <laughs> enthusiastic about this because she dressed up like a Peg Bundy version of Roseanne. And they use kind of the Roseanne kind of font. And that's what she's supposed to look like. Only she's both like herself as Nina West and as Andrew dressed like John Goodman on the mm. couch. Like, I just have a lot of problems with this only because I would like her to have kept as much distance away from Roseanne Barr as possible. <laughs> that's my feeling True. on it. So I'm like, couldn't you pick something else? Like, uh, I don't know. Like, like um, what is that show? American Dad? Um, something. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so she's dropping a uh, new album. She dropped a music video called Huck. It's about Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Oh. I watched it today. It got dropped on Friday, the day after she after the airing of her elimination. So it was perfectly timed. She knew what she was doing. It is an <laughs> acid trip of a music video. She plays Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She has some other queens in it. Um, uh yeah it's it's uh i don't know how to describe it it's wild and different i don't expect it to be like a top dance hit or anything but like then again i'm like what what else would it be it's nina west obviously you can support her buy her pins buy her shirts go see her her calendar tour is like showing she's got a lot of stuff coming up into june uh She's going to the fucking UK this summer. She's going to be in Australia in the fall. She's going to travel the world. So I'm pretty excited about Kudos that. for her. Yes. That being said, if you would like to uh, let us know how you feel about things, uh, you can do that <laughs> several ways. You can contact us at our blog, which is CubsOutLoud.com. You can send us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voicemail at 361 well talk that's 361-265-8255 on social media just type in comes out loud pretty much as one word if you want to join our entourage social chat where everyone has like been chomping at the bit this week specifically to vent uh -huh. their feelings about what happened so so after this episode y'all the gate the floodgates are open yeah the moratorium is lifted uh, if you want to join it, it's tinyurl.com slash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M dash or hyphen C-O-L-D-R. You can join us in our chat in there uh, talking about the show uh, and other things related to the Rue Girls. Um, if you want to support Cubs Out Loud, you can go to our merch store, which is azzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud uh, to get various shirts, hats, different things of that nature. You can also become a patron over at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can get, you know, different fun rewards, including uh, full copies of the RSS feed for the audio where you get the pre-show, the post-show, as well as like you get to watch the secluded YouTube videos of other stuff. Uh, outside of the regular pri public stuff. You can also rate us on iTunes. You can subscribe on Google Play, pretty much anywhere there's podcasts. Like, rate us, you know, help tell other people mm -hmm. about it. We appreciate it. Um, COLDR does have its own feed, just so you know, uh, in case you're like a Rue fan and, you know, that's what you want to focus on. If you want to get in touch with us, Damon, where would they find you? Okay, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCub79 on most bear related sites are um pup underscore umbra on twitter if you would like to get in touch with me you can pretty much find me anywhere online as gara bear 73 that's g-a-r-b-e-a-r-7-3 uh feel free to send me a message when you do so so i know who you are and why you're reaching out to me because awesome. otherwise you might be a stranger and i'd be like i don't know you uh i don't know, I don't know her <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So uh, with that, that's the wrap up of this episode. Uh, we got Ooh. one more regular episode this season and then we move into the reunion and then we move into the fan finale. And then Damon and I get to take a fucking vacation. Yeah. And if Ooh. we're lucky, we might get six goddamn months at minimum without another show. Yeah. So another season. That being said, <laughs> us things I've ever heard out there ever. Adventure is out there. Go big. Be kind. Go west. Uh.
Bye, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.